Lawrence, I don't think anybody would disagree with the fact that many of the constants of nature are so finely tuned so that life as we are, it can exist. How that happens and why that happens, there are obviously different opinions. What is emerging today is a, is a, a consensus of, among a very unusual group of people who, fundamental physicists who have no, no interest in theology, theologians and philosophers who are coming to the idea of what's called an anthropic principle, a multiverse of perhaps an infinite number of different universes that self-selects for our existence. What do you think of that? <laughs> well, let, let me let me first question something you said at the very beginning, by the way. I think it's it it, it looks like the the fine the constants of nature are fine-tuned for life to exist. But we but it's we don't know if another set of constants would allow another kind of life to exist. We don't know enough. It's part of the problem of the anthropic principle, is it's really a principle based on ignorance, not knowledge. It's based on saying, we don't know the answer. We don't know enough about the universe to know if there's a fundamental theory that says it has to be this way, or if these weird coincidences are there because we happen to be measuring them. We happen to be in the universe that, that measures them. It sounds like a tautology. It's not. I mean, it sounds with content-free. It's not quite content-free. <laughs> what amazes me is what you just said, is, is that people are taking it more and more seriously. It used to be what, I, what one would call the last refuge of scoundrels. Whenever you couldn't understand anything, you'd say, oh, it's an anthropic argument. It turns out that th there have been recently, I think, uh, a number of measurements, primarily the, the, the dark energy in the universe that are so strange that there's no sensible theory that seems to be explicable that, that, that could account for that. But there is a very natural, apparently anthropic, argument. Well, if this it, is the one where you have to cancel out 120 orders of magnitude and get not to zero, which maybe theoretically you could, yeah. but to some infinitesimal small number. Exactly. And, and exactly. How can you do that? It's crazy. But we measure that there's an infinitesimal small number, but it works out that if it was just a little bit larger, you wouldn't have galaxies. And if you wouldn't have galaxies, you wouldn't have stars, you wouldn't have planets, you wouldn't have people, you wouldn't have astronomers, you wouldn't have TV shows. <laughs> and therefore... Uh, you, it can't be much bigger than it is, and so sounds like you're arguing for the existence of it. Well, it's it's it right now is the most plausible argument for why the, that value has what it is. On the other hand, you have to look at more broadly and say there I think have been a number of times in the history of physics over the last century where crazy things came out and people said, well, there's no fundamental explanation. Maybe we just have to throw up in our hands and and use this anthropic argument, and. They've been wrong. We now we now have another reason to think about the anthropic argument. I I, I want I want to before I kill it. I want to raise it a little <laughs> bit, and that is we actually have cosmological and particle physics models that do predict many universes. In cosmology, you have a model called inflation, which naturally predicts even if they're just four dimensions, nothing special that there could be many universes that are created that are causally separated that never interact in which the laws of physics could be different. Domains in our normal dimensions. In our no normal dimensions, but still something you might call a multiverse. Mm -hmm. In string theory, there's now the idea that there may be, in higher set of dimensions, 10 to the 500 or perhaps even an infinite number of possible universes of many different dimensionalities, many different laws of physics. And that may be the, the only thing you can get out of string theory. So there's a natural playing field for this anthropic idea. On the other hand, the problem is it's never, it's never compelling. Here, I, take the dark energy. I have a plausibility argument for why the dark energy may have the value it does. Okay, it's plausible. It's not compelling. It's totally different than having a theory like electromagnetism or the theory electroweak theory that just is it just strikes you and and it's there and it it's robust. It can't be changed a little bit. And it, I agree, and, but what do you have that's better? Well. You can always say that. I, we don't have anything better, but you can be assured of one thing. The minute we find something better, people will drop the anthropic principle like a hot potato. It's happened every time. It's always been the theory of ignorance. It's been the thing you do when you don't have a theory. How long would it have to be, be before it would become 
obvious to you that you would have to accept an anthropic argument about, for example, the cosmological constant? Well, I think for me, the way I, what would convince me is if some other prediction of the model that predicted an infinite number of universes and or a 5, 10 to the 500 and gave me anthropic reasoning, some other aspect of the model was vindicated by observation. So if there was some other evidence that string theory was correct or that that extra dimensions were correct, if there was some other aspect of the theory that told me it was in the right track, then I might be willing to believe that, or, or accept this, this... You're requiring a theory, a fundamental theory, uh, uh, supporting an anthropic principle. The anthropic principle is just a predictor of, 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 of what the facts are. Well, in fact, it's a post dictor. That's yeah, the problem. Exactly. And that's You're the right. huge problem. You're right. And that's You're right. and, and and science really should, at its best should be based on prediction. And so I can post dict a lot of things. It's really easy. It's called hindsight. And and <laughs> uh, and, and and so uh, it's not. Most people would say it's not worth as much as a prediction. So if the theory could make us, if I had any theory, even not a completely fundamental theory, but if I had any prediction that I could test that was associated with the post dictions from the same idea. I, I might believe it more, but but I think I think you have to to just throw up because the problem is even the anthropic principle as it's defined now is poorly defined because we don't know. It is true that life as we know it uh, can only exist because the constants of nature are, are as they are. But if they were changed, we don't know the whole spectrum of possibilities that could exist, and we don't know if intelligent life and other things. Uh, couldn't exist. We don't even if know. If, the problem is it's also based on a priori probabilities that we don't know. Whenever you do the anthropic argument, including the anthropic argument for the cosmological constant, you're basing it on what's the probability that different universes have certain values. Well, if you don't have a theory, you don't have a probability, so you're inventing it. And what, in fact, what a colleague and I have recently shown is if you take a different set of probabilities, the same anthropic argument doesn't predict that the dark energy should have the value it, it has. It's, that whole beautiful argument goes out the window. If I assume a different measure, for example, if instead of counting the likelihood in a given universe of having a certain number of galaxies, which is the standard argument, let me count the likelihood that an observer like you and me would measure the dark energy. Okay? Well, that's slightly different because it turns out in universes with smaller and smaller amounts of dark energy, as I've shown, life can exist for longer and longer. So in universes with much smaller values, you'll have life existing much longer. So at any random time in that universe, you're more likely, if you take time as your variable mm -hmm. instead of galaxies, you're more likely at any given time to measure a universe with a value that's much smaller than we measure. So that mm -hmm. it's a different anthropic argument that gives a totally different answer. And the problem is it's based on a set of probabilities that without some fundamental theory are just completely ad hoc and are at best plausible. And surely to God, after 400 years of science, we shouldn't be based on plausibility. We should be driven by, by, by the cold, hard evidence of experiment.